Now, Pep, let's talk about. Okay, so first of all, they um they announced the uh, what is it, the third the third episode of Celebrity Drag Race, mm-hmm. and it's uh it's uh and also it's, it's really funny. It's one of those voices like it's, uh the narrator is like like we're doing a summer blockbuster. It's like <laughs> this <Yeah>. summer. <laughs> Three queens enter one room. Nino West, Kim Chi, and Bob the Drag Queen. And of course, as soon as they say Bob the Drag Queen, enter, enter a typical, um, you know, drag race fan response, which is, uh, ugh. Like, it's like all these comments are like, oh my God, Bob again? I can't say, why, you know, yik, yik, yak, this, that, and the other. People saying, oh my God, I mean, Bob, again, can we please get another? And then somebody actually had the nerve to list off, can we please get a whole nother set of queens? And they listed off the names of all the I queens. Can find the, I can find the list. I can find the list right now, Miss Honey, Miss Thing. <laughs> because it's one of those moments where I'm like, in my head, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, you know what, girl, I don't have the time of day to do all this shit. But let me tell you right now, oh, I had time. <laughs> Oh, I found the time during quarantine, honey. Um, so th- this was, uh, I'm not going to say they use his name, but it says so many drag queens from early seasons and even new seasons that they want to see. And, 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 and you put Bob again. I mean, yeah, she is great, but why not give the opportunity to other queens like Yara, Sophie, like Yara, Acid, Betty, Dela, Scarlett, Max, Ivy Winters, April, um, Thorgy, Miss Fame, J. Jo Lee, Jessica Wilde. And I was like, well, one, you didn't name a single black queen. Um, Not one. But there there are queen, three queens of color of in color. there. That's at least something. <laughs> is, this, is this petty? I went through his... Um, is this, okay, I, I know the answer to my question. It is petty. Okay. I yes. went through that person's um, follow, and I was just scrolling. Pep, they don't follow a single black person. I'm telling you, not a... Not, not a like, black human. Not a not a black dot, not a, uh, not the word black, nothing with uh, black in it. And I was like, let me just let me just check and see. So then I tweeted back. I said, if I had to guess, I would assume they chose me for Snatch Game because I won my season, and they chose me for the roast because I'm a, I'm a professional comedian. Just a guess though. So I was being a little petty on this day. I was like, you know, I don't have time for this shit. And then did they respond? Um, Someone else said 16 of the Snatch Game winners and countless other comedians, but it's but it's only you. Yeah, you're allowed to question why why we get the same queen twice. And then I said, well, how many of those other comedians have two stand-up specials with five stars on Amazon and iTunes asking for a friend? <laughs> and then, of course, they didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, of course, they didn't, um, like, respond to that. But then, so then all the fans started jumping in being like, but I will say this. Let me just say this out loud, though, too, because not all of the fans are it, like. I think it actually might be a minority, but they're just so so loud, loud. so loud. And contrary, whatever if you say left, they just say, "Well, actually, it's right." Yeah. Like just just to say it, because then when you contact them or have a conversation with them, then they back down. Except for the one, and you and I talked a little bit about this. Before I think oh, we, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. where well, I posted, um, what did I post? I don't remember what the damn post was about. No, it, uh, it, it, it was it was it was when World of Wonder posted about the uh, support. These oh, queens. when World of Wonder supposed to, posted about support these queens, someone who's a fan of the show uh, immediately chimes in and basically had a problem with them posting about supporting the queens and also wanted to raise the issue that some of the queens, I guess, some of the queens in that thread or some of the queens that they've seen have said, you know, send money to my Venmo whether it's in a tip show, like a show as a method of tipping or whatever. And this person really had a problem with queen. I don't think queens should be posting their Venmo. Fans are going to get upset. People are going to be mad that they're going to do it. People are going to think that it's tone deaf and they should not do it. And I told this person, I was like, look, I, I get that. And that's true. But we are in a global pandemic and all bets are off. We've all lost our work. Some people yep. have you know, different situations. And the, the all bets are off. And so you have to like understand that this is how mo- many of the queens earn their money. And he was like, well, or, you know, I'm not sure they, I don't know their gender, so I won't assume, but they were like, well, um, you know, y'all got makeup lines and, um, you know, all kinds of deals and shit. And I'm like, not everyone has that. Some queens exactly. don't have merch. Some queens don't have a makeup line. 
And so I'm going to post whatever I need to post to get because I got a bill to pay today. And yeah, the, the crazy thing, too, is that, like I'm looking at this. Um, I've been thinking about the because I think everyone thinks that because you are verified on Instagram or Twitter or um, my, you get personally, checks I'm in the mail every day. Right. From Instagram, <laughs> just for being verified. I'm, I'm verified on, on uh, Uber Eats. Uh, <laughs> so they send you free four four course meal every day with lobster because you well, every, every meal I get a free knife and a fork, and I really appreciate <laughs> that too. Um, but the, they they send like they think that because you're verified because you have this many followers, you are rolling in the dough. I mean, I'm gonna tell people right now, I I'm not rich. I'm not a I'm not a rich person. I'm not like hurting. I'm not like crawling in the streets. But I am not rich. And the thing is, too, once you start doing more and more stuff, your expenses go up, but your income doesn't always go up. Yeah, Does that make that's any what sense? they don't understand. I had to try to explain a little bit about the economics of the of what we go through to this person just so that they understood. It's, you know, like, they're not, they, they have no way to see it from our perspective, and I get that. So I was trying to open up the door and turn on the light a little bit to explain. They, they really were still insisting you know, they, they have their, their ideas, and that's fine. But, you know, like, I, I had to tell them, like, I know for a fact that there are some drag race queens who have started, church flipped on the survival sex work or at least turned on an only page fan, uh, OnlyFans page, whether mm -hmm. that's survival sex work or what they want to call it. But I really don't think it's because they just think it's fun. I think they're doing it as a way to get money because it's a surefire way to get money. And so a girls gotta make a girls gotta, girls make, gotta make a coin. Why do we not? And I have to tell you, the average person, you know, like m there's a lot of people who have kids. Like they brought up, like some people have kids and families, and people are sick. And I'm like, first of all, I'm in New York City. I know that people are sick. If believe me, I, I'm yeah. aware that people have coronavirus. I've lost yeah, some exactly. people. I've I and and I may have had to stop. So like I get it. But then mm -hmm. also, you know, I, I get pe everyone has their own life and everybody has their own expenses. But like, we have a situation where like, I've done 17, 11 to 5,000 benefits that are sending money to everybody else that I'm not taking a dollar from. Mm -hmm. So can I please post my Venmo so I can get a ch chicken big sandwich tonight? Like yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's the realty, and, and it's also like I, you know who I've been thinking about a lot. I've been thinking about these season uh, twelve girls, which is so wild because these girls are like thinking about it costs a lot of money to go on Drag Race, especially nowadays. Like nowadays, thousands. like more than ten, 10 thousand. Yeah, I was looking at Britta Filter, her outfits and her hair and are sick, and, the, and she was having like, post Drag Race yeah. outfits, caliber yeah. outfits. There's the outfits that you get that look cute. Before you go on to anybody that doesn't know this, all you got to do is go back and watch the older seasons. Like before, really, before, every season. But any, like the, the further you go back, the less fancy they get. And that's because the queens were spending less and le they had less resources, but they were spending less and less on their outfits. On season one, they probably were not, I know they were not spending 10000 I'm sure that most of those queens, most of their looks were stuff that they already had. And sure. then every year, I, what ended up happening, at least for season nine, more than half of the things, because they do send you a people know by now, they send you a list. We're not sitting up there sewing every single challenge. And so yeah. they send you a list ahead of time. That's how the outfits are. If there's an orange challenge, they surprise the girls. The girls know that there's going to be an orange. They have to bring exactly. an orange outfit. And so, you know, each, each year, the queens, I think, bring less and less of what's already in their closet. And I think, I'm sure, for season 12, they sent them that list of 50 things, because it's 50 things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, it, they it, had it all the a, a lot of shit. Things. Yeah, and they had. I bet you they had every single one of those things freshly made. Because I had, I think we had like thirty or forty things, and I had twenty or third twenty five things made. I might have brought. And that's so I, I, expensive. That is yeah. so, like handmade, not like I would, handmade from scratch. Especially if you look back at like season two, James, formerly known as Tyra uh, Sanchez, he was the mm -hmm. only person. On the show, wearing custom clothes. I mean, sh shout out to the, the girls, but they were all wearing shit from the mall. And James was the only yeah. person wearing like custom garments that he that he and his fucking drag family probably made. Um, there was no such thing as a national drag designer at, back then. 
There was no there was such no thing Domino as one designer that all the girls. Yeah. There was no Domino Couture. There was no Christopher Palou. There was none of that. <laughs> yeah, it's so wild. And so that so that that's like one of the the like so also to anyone watching this, me and Pep like we talk just about every day about random whatever <laughs> kind of mess. And this is why today, like yesterday, Pep was like, we need to talk because I also want to talk about the race component involved in. Uh, Let's like, jump in. <laughs> you, I don't know that any have. Been, I don't know. It's it, it is in, it's interesting to me. I, I something I always say like I was the first black queen who wasn't RuPaul who wasn't RuPaul to reach a million Instagram followers. Um, I mean since then Shangela and Naomi have surpassed me. Fuck those hoes. Um, oh shit! Out, really? Love, love them both. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, they both have more followers, but they, they went on All Stars. You know, once you go on All Stars, it gives you a, right, right, a yeah. little, little boost. Um. But, like, the fact that I was the first black queen, and by the way, I didn't do it until um, right like before, last year. Like, yeah. two years ago. Yeah. Like, and less than said, two years ago. And I, 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 I don't know if this is, actually, I do know. I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that if I was, like, white, I would have reached a lot of the goals that I've reached <laughs> years ago. Way faster. Years Way ago. Way faster. And, like, yeah, I completely agree. Part of me thinks that it, there's there's a, a couple of things going on. It's implicit bias. You know, people click on what they relate to. So people are like, well, I relate to Aquaria because Aquaria and I have more in common than Bob and I have in common. So therefore, I click on her page and I like her stuff. But like, why mm-hmm. does... I want to look up right now so I can see the, the difference between Gigi Good and Jada Essence Hall. What Gigi do you mean the Good difference? And Instagram followers. Oh, so Gigi, Gigi Good has, has, fi- um, has 500, she's almost more than me, like 500, almost 526 or something like that. She's And Jada has 200. She, okay, she has exactly the same amount as I've had, and I've been off of Drag Race for two years now. And no, I you, have, Don't stop it, off Drag Race. You've been off Drag Race, you've been on Broadway, you've been on how many TV shows, <laughs> you've been on Pose, you have been uh, at, the, at film festivals. You, I mean, I, I say this to uh, Monet all the time. I was like, Pep, and I'm not just trying to, you know, I always uh, blow smoke up your ass, but I'm like, <laughs> Pep is literally going to go down in black history. You are the first trans woman to ever have a, a trans person, openly trans person, to have a leading role in a Broadway show, and you're black, and <laughs> a bitch black. <laughs> 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 so, like, how, uh, bitch, I said bitch where? How? So not only just you've been off the show for that long, but you've been off the show and all around the world. You've worked the world five times. You mm-hmm. have done all the <laughs> shit. Like how, how, bitch, how? People love to sleep on the black queens. You know, it's just, they're not checking. Somebody tweeted today, like, oh my God, I'm just watching. And I didn't realize Peppermint was on season 14 of uh, uh, America's Next Top Model. Fine, who cares? You probably didn't know who I was then, but like, it is, it, I don't understand it. Like, if you're a Drag Race fan, what I would probably do, most probably, mm-hmm. it, or if I'm a fan of a show, if I'm following the people, then I'm probably going to go on and look up more than one person. When you see a show and you see the cast, you look up the cast, and then you start to follow all of them because you want to see all the stuff. You're not just following one queen. It's not like they only the people that are following um, Gigi Good are only following Gigi Good and no other Drag Race queen. Yeah. They're following Gigi Good, Aquaria, Trixie, Alyssa, like that list. And they're not following the rest of us. And it's so, but they're up in our comments. Yep, they be there. They're they're up they they write up on the, the minute you open your black mouth, <laughs> they are like, well, oh, well, actually. And so I don't understand. I mean, I, I do understand. What this? It's like they not if they don't if they don't want to mess with you if they don't see you and they don't want to follow you then stay the hell up out of my comments mm-hmm. stay up out of my stuff yeah. don't be there don't tag me don't you know like what do you want and I mean I'm I try my best not to focus as a central piece like as my central talking piece and my messaging on race because not that not that I don't ex- acknowledge it but. I know that when I lead with certain language, then it then it shuts people off, and they're not able to hear my message. Mm-hmm. Even if my message is that th- that this is 
unjust. But the, the bottom line is, it's just not fair. Like the way, how you're doing this is not balanced, it's not I fair, agree. and you're treating one group of people differently than the other group of people, and let's, exam let's compare it and examine why. And a lot of the times, the only difference is the color. Like Gigi Good and Jada, they're both fierce, they're both fly, they're both, they both have a similar body type, they're both very fashion, they're both of their outfits are very lovely made. Like they both make their own outfits and they're all very well made. Their hair and their makeup is on point always. Always, always, always. They they're 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 both got some personality, but neither of them are like this huge comedy queen that like they're like a kooky person. They both have a similar kind of vibe in terms of half comedy, half fashion, equal parts fashion and entertainment. Yeah. And so like none of them is like an absolute kooky clown. You know, where like they're just like you know so cra so crazy that you so have you to never, follow. So, that's why and I so, don't know what is based on because some folks are like well it's based on who's doing better in the show. Well, I think as of essentially now, they are um, exactly tied. Well, technically Jada's ahead because she has less times in the bottom because Gigi was in the bottom a few times <laughs> the, the past couple mm -hmm. weeks. And, Twice. Or, or, or when you think back to when Widow won the first challenge, you think that oh shit she won the first challenge she would be, you know. Towards the top. Towards the top, but it just doesn't seem to work out that way. But also, you, you look at who are the, who are the, who are the favorites. Uh, Alyssa Edwards, white and blonde. Trixie Mattel, white and blonde. Alaska, white and blonde. Katya, white and blonde. Cracker, white and blonde. I mean, I, I could do this until the end of time. Aquaria, white and often blonde. Um, Trinity, white and, well, she'd be wearing red. She she, she don't have a hair color. Every, I feel like every queen has a hair color except... <laughs> Kimchi and Trixie. Trinity. They, they be, yeah, Trinity. Yeah. yeah, Kimchi and Trinity. They be, their hair be different colors all the time. But, um, and then it's annoying too and when people say stuff like, well, Bob has a million followers. And I'm like, you don't get to point out the exception and act like that's the standard. Mm hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's also weird yeah. too, because like when you are a, being a, a local girl, being a New York City girl, you can see how celebrated black queens are. I mean, in New York City, it's like Peppermint, Bianca Del Rio, Shaquita, Monet Exchange, Britta Filter, Bob the Drag Queen, Pixie Aventura, Laguna Blue. Um, like, like I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And oh, that sounds so country. On and on and on. You just had so country. <laughs> on, and, on and on Sorry. and on and on. On and on and on. <laughs> um, Thank you. But I feel like whenever we go on... Uh, when you go on RuPaul's Drag Race, it's like shifted, and it was so strange to me to see that. Like, I honestly am blown away, blown away at how these fans are treating Britta Filter. This, I haven't seen it. To give some examples, they have bullied her off the internet. The bullying got so bad, she was like, "I'm done. I'm leaving." She stopped posting for like three or four weeks. She's, I mean, think about where Britta is right now. Britta's in Maine at her parents' place. All she has is the comments. She does not have, she can't go to shows and have people go, girl, you are amazing. You know what, girl, I, you're my, I love you so much. She can't, um, she does not have that. All she has is people on the internet calling her this, calling her that, calling her fat Moana, calling her this, that, and the other thing. And in my head, all I see is this person of color who, for them, what they see is a big, person of color, a big Samoan man um, bullying this white person and they just like jump on them and it's weird because like you see other queens doing very similar things. If you go back and look at Alyssa Edwards on season 5, I don't remember her being super friendly. I remember her looking at um, J. Joe Lee and saying mama this is garbage. I remember her um, looking at um, uh, Morgan what's her name and going uh, sit your ass down and shut the hell up bitch. I remember her walking up to um to Coco Montrese and going, girl, look how fucking orange you look, girl. Orange you look. Like, mm -hmm. in they, That's bullying. And they love. <laughs> they uh, loved it. It became meme, meme, lovely meme, fun meme. And I don't ever, I mean, look, I'm, look, let's be, let's just say this. All queens that are on the show, all people that are in, on, in public get some hate. I'm sure Alyssa gets people talking. I remember people were talking about her, her, like, overbite. Yeah. People do talk about like physical attributes, think that she can't change. People were coming for her, but never in the way that, I don't think ever enough to, and I don't know how she felt about that. I'm sure it didn't feel good, but I never, never in a way 
that it seemed like it was an attempt to get to push her over the edge. Yeah. And and that's what I think people are like relentless. Like the only thing they'll take for the, with so when Britta comes to mind, it's just literally I can't stand her. I don't like her. She's a just like like no 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 at like almost as if we have and and World of Wonder has done a and I might get in trouble when I say this. World of Wonder has done a good job of removing Sherry from the Sherry Pie from the conversation of season twelve. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still an important conversation to have, and she's still a, a human being, and she's deserving of respect and and her chance to speak when she wants to. Um, she has obviously hasn't been very active, but you would, and I and I she definitely has been getting she's definitely gotten hate Sherry Pie. I can't deny that. But I'm saying it seems like the villain of season 12 has become Britta. Britta which is... <laughs> so, it, which, it is so weird because like I just know Britta in New York City. Like, I, she's uh, so respected. Especially so sweet for like, and for so like a respected. young queen. Like, she's like a... I mean, she's actually <laughs> older than I am. But her drag career is younger than mine is. And like, mm -hmm. there, I feel like there's this thing where, where New York City... It's like it's like the RuPaulcalypse. RuPaul snatches up the top queens in New York City, and then when those queens go away, the next level of queens go up. They took away Bianca, and then right I up. rose up. Mm -hmm. They took away me, and then Cracker and Monet rose up. Took them away, and then mm -hmm. now Britta and Jan are rising up. And they took them away, and now mm -hmm. have, you know all the other girls who are rising up as well. Um, and every time a new girl gets snatched up, the old girl gets snatched up, a new girl rises. And Britta was one of those girls who was rising, and just. And let me say this unequivocally, she is loved in this city. She works everywhere. She is respected. People fucking love Britta Filter, or as you know her on Drag Race, Britta. Um, so to, <laughs> to see the, the response that the fans have been giving her, I talked to her on the phone, and she's like, it's tough. And that was hard to hear. Talking to this girl mm -hmm. who's like, I've been waiting for this my whole life, and then, or my whole career anyway, and then I got here, and this is what it was. Like, it, it ended up just, like, turning mm -hmm. upside down on me. And now she feels like people hate her. And I'm like, Mama, no, people fucking love you. It's just these crazy ass... It's the few people that are standing on... They're, like, on every comment and everything. And it's it, what is interesting, it seems like the people that are in these comments are waiting for their opportunity, looking and waiting for their opportunity to have, like, a Bianca Del Rio-type quip or or something sassy to say because they want to almost assume the personality of these queens. Yeah. Some of them, the, the ones that I think I de what I would assume identify as gay men. Um, and not only the, those people, but just, you know, like they, they, it's one of two camps, like instantly their people are giving you the same drag queen type of sass mm -hmm. back to you that you, I'm like, darling, you're not a you're not a queen. You're yeah. you're not a drag queen. Like, what what is this? And so they have that, and then, but that's fine because they pick it up and like they're fans of the show, whatever. But then there's the other camp of people who who's who all of the negativity seems to it came to come swooping in, and it has this racist tone to it, and but it's really it as puzzling. It's like, my head. Just that I don't want Bob on another episode doesn't mean it, doesn't mean it's not racist. And I'm like, well, that's not necessarily true. And also, I'm looking at the idea like, first of all, I'm not. I no, it's it's not it's not just because you don't want Bob on an episode. If someone, if I had a fight with Bob, then I might not want Bob on the episode. It's not that you don't want Bob on the episode. It's how, why, and when we talk about why, we have to look at how you treat other people in comparison. Yeah. Do you treat everyone the same? And if you if you can look at your list, if you can go through your comments and go through the people that you shot down and go through the people who just don't like. And if most of those people are one way, one yeah. sex, one age, one gender, one anything, then there's a chance that deep down inside your brain, you just don't like that type of person. Because then we can also take that same logic and probably apply it to the rest of your life. Mm. If, there's, if, if, you, if you hate Bob, Monet, uh, BB, me, Shangela, Shay Kool Aid. Uh, Shea Kool Aid. If you have said, I don't like this queen and I'm not here for them, on, on all of those people's things that I just listed, chances are you have said that there's seven black queens. Chances are there's at least 
seven to fourteen to six hundred fifty three thousand black people that you've said that about in your life yeah, as in well. In real life, yeah, exactly. Every day you in see real life, folks in not life. drag queens from Drag Race. And so, like, let's look at the trend. How do you behave on trend generally? And that's what people are not looking at. That's so weird to me. Like, whenever if if a bunch of black folks are saying something, instead of being like y'all are wrong. Why don't people just sit back and think to themselves, consider maybe this is true. Maybe what they're saying actually might be true as opposed to being like, no, it, that's that's not what it is. It, it can't possibly be that. And I also want to give a shout out to some of the folks who did step up and say something like Trinity Taylor and Aquaria um, who have used their privilege to, which I, I try to do as well. Like, for example, if I see people saying like transphobic stuff toward like trans femmes or trans mass people, then I try to use my, um, privilege as like a, you know, male passing yada, yada, yada to be like, well, let me go ahead and shut that down. And the fact that those queens mm -hmm. did step up and say something I think personally is commendable and a big deal. And it's, and it's, and it's Aquaria and, and Trinity are the first two who usually do. Usually the first two to, I'm not saying that, that I've, everything they have said has been perfect or anything, but when it comes to acknowledging biases, biases and sticking up for, for people and, and jumping into the conversation um, when it looks like queens of color being treated unfairly, Trinity and Aquaria have always what, what I've seen, been right there to be like, yes, and support that and agree. There's a lot of qu queens who, well, 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 those are the two. Yeah. And so I haven't seen a lot of other <laughs> queens engage themselves. That's true. I mean, I, I, you know? I, maybe there are other queens who do it and I just don't see them very often, but I can say pretty consistently, mm -hmm. if you are being messy in regards to race, uh, Trinity and Aquaria will be at your front door like, I was waiting on you at the dough. Hello. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't that cute. Your hairline's crooked. You ashy. What did they... Do you remember this? Do you remember this? It was the... Um, Trinity? You know, it was, this, uh, oh, wait, it was from, from? Uh, like, locked up or scared straight or something. And it was this, um, just like... Oh, with the gay, with the yeah, queer one? queen in, in the prison. They were, like, trying to scare someone. <laughs> and then this yeah. queen walked up to this one little gay, and the one little, uh, I don't know if he was with some straight kid or whatever. And he was like, you ain't that cute. Your hairline's crooked. You dusty. I saw you and I was waiting <laughs> on you with the dough. <laughs> you did that little, <laughs> that little head tilt. They got me together. Um, now I um, I'm. This is a little more serious, but I'm just like, I feel like that what happens in the drag race world carries over to what happens in just everyday life. You know, like what the problems that are happening in real life they reflected in the Drag Race fandom and how, how a lot of folks get treated. And well, yeah, Drag Race is a I microcosm am, of the real world. Of the real world. And so I'm sitting here in New York City a little frustrated because just like you mentioned, we're, we're not socializing with people, so we're just getting the comments and the stuff from the news and all that stuff. And I am at my wit's end seeing in the same day a bunch of folk... Um, protesters in Michigan Ooh, don't even get me started wa walking in with walking in with guns screaming at the the police that are guarding the building screaming at the police getting physical I won't say that they're hitting and punching the police but the it, it we already they know that them. it it doesn't take a yeah, I know it doesn't take much to consider a small action and act of aggression towards a police officer let's at least say that yeah Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. I will tell you this. I okay. am literally afraid of cops. I am I'm scared. Afraid. And that is beat into us. When a cop comes around, I'm afraid in a subconscious level that just something could happen. And I, I start, I actually start sweating. Yes. My heart rate goes up. I start, I start thinking, okay, what do I have that could look illegal? Did I do, am I standing the wrong way? Are they, are they, look, look over. Oh, they, they see me looking? This happened yesterday. People and so marching in Michigan. There's people um, pushing the, the park ranger into the water. I don't know if you saw that. There's people, there's many instances of people challenging these police officers. And I think challenging the police is, is, a, is a, as a protester, is a right. Police are human and they're not always correct. But they're not physically. No, no, no. But hold on. I'm saying, I'm just saying, saying something to challenge them. Yeah, like, 
it, um, in, intellectually challenging the police um, yeah. or symbolically challenging the police. But I take those images of these people challenging the police, pushing, pushing them, putting things in their face, getting in their face, like taking a stance towards them, puffing up. I'm seeing that and I'm putting it next to the images of not we forget about everybody from two, three, four, five years ago. Not forget about, but we don't even need to go back two, three, four, five years, okay, mm -hmm. to the instances of police violence on unarmed black men. Let's talk about during the pandemic. The black people black and black and Latin and people of color who I've seen, I've seen three videos that were all taken this week of people of color out on in public, not social distancing, maybe wearing or not wearing a mask, and getting beaten up by the cops and arrested. Then you take that and put that against, okay, the, the white people who have been crowding around in, on the piers in New York City, not social distancing, not wearing masks. Oh, and the, what cops, happens? Are the cops, out masks. cops are handing out free masks. Okay, take them out of the equation. What about the ones that are going up to the cops and going like this in their face? Nothing happens. Spitting in Spitting their faces it. when I don't there's see, a pandemic. There's no videos. I guarantee in that crowd someone has coronavirus. That, so now you are spitting on cops. That video of that woman in that Iowa park that I know you saw, mm -hmm. who she, a bunch of mothers of ladies had taken their kids to the park, and we're not. We're, this was like a week or two ago before the any any uplift, any lockdowns had been lifted up, and uh, taking their kids in the park, and then a, some police come in and say the playground is off limits, but you can go to the over, to, you know, to the to the field, not the field, <laughs> to the field. <laughs> go <laughs> like, put your ass in the field. You, you you ain't never been in no field. <laughs> you ain't never gonna be in no field. <laughs> but over in the grass or whatever they at, at the park. You know I don't go outside. Uh, and so, <laughs> and so he told them, y'all have to leave. And then they had a whole big stink about it. We're not going to leave. We don't want to leave. Why do we have to leave? We, we're, this is, we pay taxes, tell, telling their list of rights, why they think that their rights are being violated and why they should have the right to stay in the park and all the reasons. And when he brings up social distancing and coronavirus, they're like, we're fine. We're not doing anything. All that. And then, and he says, um, and this was a 15 minute video. He gave her 15 minutes and said, please leave. He reasoned with her calmly. Could you imagine 15, 15 whole minutes? 15 minutes. And then she, and that, then that is, the only reason she ended up in handcuffs is because she said, oh yeah? Well then arrest me. And she turned around and he hesitated and she stood there with her arms behind her back, like handcuff me in a handcuffing motion. And he stood there. And then he was like, okay, and peacefully took her in. I have never seen a police officer he go up held to- her like a baby uh, yeah. in the car. <laughs> Pet her Cradled her, her, coddled her, told her it's gonna be all right. I have never seen a police officer go up to uh, a white person and punch them in the face, slap them in the face, knock them to the ground, who wasn't being aggressive. Um, I'm, there certainly have been cops who've done all kinds of stuff to people who are criminals, who've been committing crimes and with guns and running around and shooting people yeah. up. They do what they have to do. The police do what they have to do. But I'm talking about these, comparing these instances, whether or not it's, you think that you can say that's an isolated instance. And it's funny because people will say that that's an isolated instance, but they'll, but they'll turn around and say, not Bob the drag queen, and when you say I'm a comic, yeah. then they'll be, you know, like they, they, they don't apply the same logic. But what is wrong is that you compare these two moments and the feeling of, it seems like the feeling that many of these people in Michigan and wherever they are feel is that we don't have to, the, where the protesters are, we can challenge the police, we can do whatever we want. And this feels like their, it almost feels like their civil rights movement. You know what I mean? Where they yeah, feel like yeah. their rights are being challenged. Meanwhile, these folks that have been arrested are people of color. They and they. I thought, okay, m maybe they did break the law. And so we're trying to figure out what did these people do that they're getting tackled and punched in the face, punched in the face, mm -hmm. and then handcuffed and dragged Sometimes down the street. The hair, I've yeah, seen it. yeah. 
what did these people do? One of the videos, the cop is like, they weren't social distancing. So you gonna beat? So you gonna beat beat this motherfucker? And I've seen them doing it to kids. I've seen them doing it to uh, mm -hmm. like s small people, much smaller than than the, than the cops. Than there, mm -hmm. and it's it's why, and it's really something, something that Sunny Sunny said on the View today. Or I, I watched it. I watched this morning, so I must. Be, and, she, and she said, uh, "It's funny how like black uh, blue lives mattered up until they were being told to stay at home." So she was like, "So I don't know if they were saying blue lives matter or if they were just saying black black lives, lives don't, don't matter." matter. I was and like, that's Sonny, you better true. say it. You better say it. It's true. So the next time, <laughs> the next time she said, Colin Kaepernick was protesting, mind you, protesting police violence against unarmed peacefully. black people. Peace, peacefully protesting about the violence that unarmed black men have suffered. And, uh, and forget the violence. Don't forget the violence. But even if you don't... Um, use the violence as your prime example, you can just talk about the people who've been shot and killed by police officers, which is obviously, it's violence, but it's a, it's murder. Yeah. It's death. Murder, yeah. And so even just those, even if that's all Ka Colin Kaepernick was protesting, which seems like a, a worthy enough thing to talk about to me, seems even if that's all, me. yeah, even if that's all that Colin was protesting, you compare that to what it is it that these folks are protesting, and why is it that Colin doesn't have a right? When we're talking about cops going up and shooting somebody in the head, why is that not as bad as you not being able, as you having to wear a mask when you get to go to the nail salon? Why is why oh. is you going to this, having to wait in line in the store for an extra thirty minutes to get some um, Rice Krispies? Why is that worse and more worthy of protesting? And everyone yeah. having an uprage than a black person getting shot in the head. Why is that so do you, more important? I'm sorry. So here's, here's a, <laughs> a, no, I get it. Here's something. That, so do you, do you ever follow people online because you like I can't. No. So there is this there is this <laughs> lady that I follow online who is this like right wing thing, and I just keep oh being like, no, I, want, I can't. I'm like. I want to talk to this lady. I need no. to talk to this lady because it's this lady. She's really against Drag Queen Story Hour. She's like, her whole platform oh, okay. for a long time was like, I hate Drag Queen Story Hour. So I was like, I'm going to get to this lady. She never, what you eating? Eggs and bacon. Your country <laughs> um, so, so anyway, so long story short, she now her new thing is like, they can't tell us stay at home, yada, yada, yada. And then I went on her page and was like, I just want to talk about like blah, blah, blah. Someone said this, any anyone who's um calling, she goes, this is like, um, because it was about churches. Churches weren't allowed to open up for a long time. Mm -hmm. and she was mm -hmm. like, if you call the cops on a church, then you, th you're you probably the same folks who would have called the cops on Harriet Tubman and Anne Frank. And I was like, let's talk about why that's a complete false equivalency. First of all, Harriet Tubman and Anne Frank weren't spreading infectious diseases. Um, Harriet Tubman and Anne Frank were not sitting in their homes with Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Facebook, Instagram, or freedom, or simple, <laughs> plain freedom. Also, when, when people say this is like being a slave, this is, or, or someone said this is like being in prison. Well, obviously, no, you've it's not. Never been to prison. You've never been to. You ain't never even heard. You ain't never even watched. An episode Lock, of, yeah, of a law and order. <laughs> nothing. Of nothing. You have and never you seen it. Oz on HBO in the <laughs> late 90s. Because this is nothing. And let me bear in mind, I have never been in prison. I've been, I've been arrested once for protesting. I was in jail I, for less than an hour. Okay? Mm -hmm. I was in jail for less than one hour. I have never been to prison. I, I bet that was even prison. worse than stay, having to stay home for the whole day. Girl, it was. <laughs> so, I, technically, I've been arrested twice. I got arrested in seventh grade, and I got arrested. Oh when no! I was protesting. Oh, um, shit. but that. Well, that was because I mean, that's an, talk about the school to prison pipeline. That's because in Atlanta, in the black schools, they have uh, school resource officers an SRO. Yeah, and police. It's it, police. Yeah, a cop who <laughs> walks around your school and, and looks for a reason to yeah. arrest you. And let me tell you right now, these cops were like cops they were not like they were not security guards they were cops if you guys they were police at my school in atlanta georgia or in the suburbs of atlanta where i went to school in clayton county you would be arrested by a police officer you would be taken to jail 
and you would have a record in perpetuity for the rest of your life, uh, uh, depending on how young you were when you got arrested. I've seen cops mm -hmm. tase people at my school, tasing seventh graders. I've seen a seventh grader get tased by a cop. And I, I have friends who are like, well, uh, my school, we just got, uh, you know, a slap on the wrist and suspended. No, at my school, you got booked and sent down to juvenile. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, thank God I did not, I had that experience in high school. But I think that there might even be some school that, that starts younger. You know, and I, and I think that the police in the schools is, let's, let's not even acknowledge the reasons why. Because we can say that some people will say that it's because of the, the, the racial makeup of the school. Some people will say it's just because of the, the, the whatever the, the rate of breaking the rules or crime is in the school, whatever it is, high or low. Some people will say that's what it is. Some people say it's because it's in an area that's that's not safe and they're just protecting the kids. So people are going to have different reasons. Bottom line mm -hmm. is the pole the the pleasance, the presence of police in a school says something. And what it yeah. says does not have a good effect on the the children that are there, especially when what's going on outside of the school these folks are seeing people that look like me are being beaten and shot and murdered and killed. Every single interaction with the police becomes negative. And if you start that in school, the effect, let's not, the reason why we all, we can disagree on, but the effect is that it is going to instill fear. Number one, at best, it's going to instill fear. It's going to, it's going, which will in turn cause those people to, the people who are afraid to dislike the police officer. Because we usually don't yeah. like what we're afraid of, most people. So there's that. But the other effect, the more direct effect, is you are going to have 100% more students arrested than you would in a school that doesn't have police walking around. I'm not exactly. saying don't call the cops. If a child breaks the law, call the cops. I can yeah. guarantee, and I don't know this, and I, I just don't know, but I wonder. My honest question is, in schools and areas that had school shootings, that, would, that, that the neighborhoods were white. I'm curious, do those schools now have armed police officers. officers walking around in the thing? I wonder, I don't know. I am curious to know because well, that's about, a serious crime. Yeah, I'm thinking too about like the percentage. I think that black people are two thirds of um, the prison population in America. Uh -huh. Which is, I think, actually, the number might be higher. I'll Google real quick. And I think uh, it might be higher. Um, Google black it. Black prison population. Black prison percentage. There we go. Um, but, like, so someone was saying, like, well, they think that black, oh, yeah, they think that black folks are creating more, doing more crime than everyone else. So, according to the U.S. Bureau of Justice, mm -hmm. in 2013, black males accounted for 37% of total male prison populations, white males 32, and Hispanic 22. So, the, the people of color percentage is over 50. So, the reason why yeah. that is... So, someone's saying, well, they think black folks are creating more crime. I was like, well, that, that is statistically impossible. Because black people are about 13% of the U.S. population. So let's just say that every single black person, all of us, all I call my mama, I call my daddy, I call they I, they call their family, they call their cousins, all call our kids, and we're all committing crimes simultaneously at the same time committing crimes. Then how many y'all are going to jail? Then the, then even if only half of the white people were committing crimes, that would still be more crime than all of the black people. Even if mm -hmm. only ha white people are about seventy percent of, of the U.S. population, even if about half of them were committing crime, it would still be more crime than the black people. Even if a third of them were committing crime, a third, it would still Bring it be, down, bring it down. It would still be more than 100% of the black population. And the reason why there are more black people in jails is because black areas are more heavily policed Police. than white areas are. So therefore, they're seeing every single thing we do. And they're also picking every single thing apart. So something- And some simple. of those cops, some of those cops, not all of them, some of them, some of them, some of them are doing the job that they're asked to do and they're just, it's only a, a byproduct of the fact that they're there. Mm -hmm. But some of those police officers, in their mind, are only, are, are, are 
are inclined to treat a black dude walking down the street differently than a random white dude walking down the street. That yeah. some of those police, not everyone, but one, some of those cops are. So you just add that on to what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, my so my I, my assistant is a uh, is a white woman. Uh, I have a Karen on my staff. A white um, woman. So whenever there's like a thing going on, I'd be like, "Girl, Kennedy, you go," because I can't. Because if I <laughs> take my big black ass up in there, I, I am like the 220 pound black man from what people see. Versus like, what do you Kennedy, mean think? What do you mean when something's going on? You mean in person, in real life? Like if there's Wait, like if, like let's say we a have fight? A, like not a dis- no, not a fight. I would not send Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there and whoop that bitch's ass. And Kennedy puts her <laughs> little pink hair up in a ponytail and start scrapping. <laughs> um, oh, I would live. No. Oh, you I'm mean if like, there's if there's someone at the register who's like giving you shade or is like sorry, you look like a you have she's the, the person that go in to handle it because yeah. she can give she they speak same language. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. I, I'll send a Karen <laughs> to meet a Karen. <laughs> I'm about to, uh, yeah, and, and, then, and then I was also talking about someone online the other day about like the difference between like Karen. Racist. Oh wait, say it. okay, go go go, hurry wait. up, go. So you know, you know, uh, white folks are mad about being called Karens. They mad. Yeah, they're saying, that, like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're like Karen is the N word for white girls. I'm like, it's not. It's not. It's I just don't just see how not. that's the same thing. Karen is actually someone's name. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's name. Is, nobody's name is nigger. <laughs> I don't know one. I don't know now, one. Either. I know. That, I know some people who think that that's what their name is, but that's not their name. Surprise, surprise. Nobody, mama, name them that. Okay, that's the my first baby, difference. My baby nigger Jones. He's so sweet. <laughs> that is the first difference. Okay, Karen is a name, and mm. that comes from like there are people named Karen. Somewhere in this world, there is, a, at right at this moment, there is 16 women screaming at, looking at, for, for complaining about something from a manager, about a manager, asking to speak with a manager, and half of their names are Karen. There That's is a Karen watching truth. this video. If your name is Karen and you're watching this video, comment below. Say, <laughs> comment. If your name is nigger, <laughs> comment below. Well, let's see. Now, let's wait. <laughs> let's wait and see. <laughs> we gonna wait and see. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you even imagine? Oh, you girl, you know somebody's gonna be up in there and be like, "My name is." Yeah, you know that ain't your name. Oh, uh, it's so crazy. <laughs> and then I was talking to someone too about like, you know, when you have biases against. Uh, other races, even if, I can't remember how I was saying this too. I was like, they were like, if you look at a black woman and you're like, I bet her name Tanisha and I bet she got five kids and they all got different daddies. Even if you're right, even if her name is Tanisha and she does have five kids and they're all by different daddies, that doesn't mean what you said is not racist. It's still racist. Even if mm-hmm. you're right. Mm-hmm. 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 You see what I'm saying? You, just like saying, I bet he's been to jail. Yeah, even you if know, you're right, it's, and, I, it's and, the I, same and thing. I have been to jail twice. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Yeah, yeah. I just people don't don't get that dynamic, and it really this is this is I, I guess what we first have to get people to understand, and I do think it's changing, is for people to understand their privilege in the situations, and it doesn't mean that everyone is always get having the best situation ever it just means what you don't have to necessarily experience and honestly i'm a, okay here's another um this is i'm um, very tough i watched a video that i wish i had not watched what yesterday did you watch it no what is it okay is it the georgia video i yes this is the a video? first time Bitch, and listen, Bob. I, it's emotional, so I'm, it's hard. It's it's tough. There is the I have only and and my whole life I can only re- I've seen a lot of bad videos and things that have been like, oh my god, that's horrible, that's a shame, and and I don't want to take anything away from that. There's been a lot, but there have been only two times where I've watched a video and wasn't ex- and didn't see what I expected. 
Like with Sandra Bland, which is a horrible thing, obviously she died later on in jail, but we were able to hear mm -hmm. that struggle with the police officers on video. There's a lot, and there's plenty of videotapes of black men being murdered on camera, but the, but the, the, it was always prefaced by, watch this if you are want to, if you want to see what happened when this person was killed. Yeah. And so your brain prepares itself. I, uh, the first time I ever watched, and this is not the same thing, but the, I was affected very deeply the first time I ever watched some of the video of what happened during Columbine. Mm -hmm. It's not the same subject, but I'm saying, I was 18 or I was 19 years old, I was in college, and at that point, I had never heard of kids with guns killing other kids. And I, it changed me, it changed my brain. You know, one of the that DJs happened that to we, me. one of the DJs in New York City that we used to work with went to Columbine when that happened. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, and so that changed me. For, I, it didn't even occur to me that that could be, that that was a thing that could happen. And so it changed me. The same thing happened yesterday. I was not expecting. I just, somebody said, this isn't right, what happened? And so I clicked on it. And I don't think I've ever, even, I don't even know. what. Don't watch this video, but please support this, people. Ahmaud Arbery was a, a man in Georgia who was running, jogging. Exercising. It looked like he was exercising. And a truck rolls up behind. This is what's in the video. A truck rolls up behind, and two people, two white men with guns, are in the truck riding. Almost, if you can look at images, pictures, and movies and film of what was happening in the 60s, 50s and 60s, uh, when, when lynchings were very high, a, a search party with guns in a pickup truck looking gets out jumps out and goes and has a scuffle with him and shoots him on video. The, the shot happens off camera. Shoots him. He's... He's fighting for his life. Ugh. And you see him fall to the ground. And I take that and compare that to what's happening to these protesters. And what's, no one's talking about this Ahmaud Arbery who got shot, jogging, exercising. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not the cops, so I get that. These are not the police. It's not the same thing. But I'm saying, why, are, why is no one looking, like, if a black man, why is a black man jogging more of a threat than a white person with a gun. I don't understand it. And, the, and this is what, yeah. this is the country we're in. And the tough thing about it too is like, when oh. you're black uh, growing up, or, or when you're indigenous, um, you, when you grow up in this country, you have to see images of your people being, like, I, I don't know that, I, I remember it be just opening up my textbook in Georgia and just like looking at a picture of like mm -hmm. a black person hanging from a tree. Like that was just like then we yeah and, right off the bat and, that was it. And Some people had that kind of stuff as decoration. Yeah. Some people, I've been in homes where I couldn't believe that there was like like art of black people either hanging from a tree or something going wrong, and it it was like what is what you know like that's yeah. their decoration. And every every February for my entire life I have every single February and also in between as well I would see footage of black people getting hosed down by the cops black people having dogs I mean white people having cops having dogs attack black people uh, I would have to just hear stories about uh, MLK and Martin Luther King and uh, Rosa Parks and being shot killed beat up arrested just for existing in the world while being black so this is the image. These aren't people that were, were walking around with guns and shooting up things. They weren't robbing banks. They weren't doing any of that. Many of them were uh, educated to the point, to the most that they could be educated in those times. I mean, Dr. You know? Martin Luther King. Um, doc, doctor, pr professionals, doctors, people, like, bit, real people with jobs, 
who are trying to do something better. And even if I you, mean, you can, even if you, you might not agree, even if you don't even have if, a job, it, yeah. even if you were, even if you uh, gra- dropped out of third grade and slept on your mama's couch, you still don't deserve that kind of treatment. That kind of treatment. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I think that having to see those images all the time growing up will make one. It makes black people afraid of authority. So when I see a cop, I just I am. When I say scared, I need you to know I'm literally afraid. Like I don't. I'm. I start. Dr- I put my hands at ten and two. I sit up. I. Yeah. I change the way I talk. I. I'm like. Can. Is, I don't. I don't listen. Anyone knows me. I don't smoke weed. I don't even drink alcohol. Bitch. I don't even take aspirin. But I'm like maybe I might have walked through a cloud of smoke on the way here and I smell like weed now. That is how yeah, nervous I get. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, on top of that. Yeah. Same. When other people see all those images, then it makes them less sensitive to the needs of people of color. So when when you're a white person who's been looking mm-hmm. at you being lynched and being hanged and being beaten and yada, 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 instead of making you like, wow, I feel sympathy, it might make you desensitized. And you're like, well, that's just kind of par for the course. That's how they are. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it is. That's what I think it is. And it, it's... I know that there's, and I want to give, especially, we're probably at the end soon, but, like, there's so many, there's more allies than I can count, thank God. There's more, in in, in terms of race, there's more uh, people who aren't people of color, white folks, who have been, who are, who are woke, who understand, who are compassionate, who are in, invested in our fight and invested in our success and celebrating us. Half of them work for us <laughs> as our assistants. Uh, but the, but there's so many people who are white who do get it and 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 many more that don't work for us <laughs> that, yeah. that do feel that way. But it just is, I think, what the if we're going to get to the place where we want to get to, which I think is harmony and everyone being happy and loving, if everyone wants that, then we have to understand the effects of what's happening to how different people are treated different how people are treated differently by different sources and how you know the differences in what happens and and that we might not usually pay attention to pay attention to and i think that there's some people both in and out of the drag race fandom that don't get that yeah so if you have made it this far in the video which we are at about almost an hour at this point this that's what i'm trying to say like <laughs> When you are online and all you do is call out black queens, Latinx queens, yada, 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 it's not just, it's it's everything leading up to this point. It's not just you said you don't want this black queen on your TV, yada, 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 or, or, or you that you slid into uh, Britta Filter's um, um, email and said, I, if I see you on the subway, I'm, someone wrote Britta and said, if I see you on the subway platform, I'm going to push you in front of a train. Like, someone wrote her that and was like, typed it and sent it and oh probably felt good about it after they did it. So if you are doing that kind of thing, it is, it's not just that incident. It's our experience is every interaction that we've had leading up to that moment. So when we say it's a race issue, that's what we're talking about. It's not just the fact that, like, yeah, maybe this. It's the fact that there is a clear difference between the way queens of color are treated in term in relation to the white queens of color, and that is a microcosm of how black people and people of color in general are treated as opposed to white people in America. It is a microcosm of the real world. Anyway, thanks for talking. This was a good one, Pat. We had a good little chat, honey. This is a good one, honey. We went the full gamut, Girl, honey. Everywhere from <laughs> laughter to emotions and woo. I love you so much. I'm... When are we gonna announce our meet and greet? Oh, let's uh, let's <laughs> announce. Well, I'm always announce. This. I, I was I was talking to the people on um, what do you call it on um this app today? I won't say the name of the app because I'm not Line? using it. Oh. I, I won't say app because mm-hmm. I'm not using it. Um, and I figured out the best way to do it is through brown. So I was actually typing the brown paper ticket stuff today, and I hope we, we can announce it within okay. a week. Okay. So we have, Bob and I have. A- Later on this week, so check it well, out. Well, I, I actually already announced it on um on uh, the Civil Rivalry Live. It was just my patrons, but but oh, me, Monet, okay. and Peppermint are all going to do a digital meet and greet. We are each only selling one hundred tickets. Full stop. End of story. Um, so there is no, there isn't. No, we can't go out to meet and greets. We can't go to DragCon. But you know what we can do? Have a personal Zoom call between or Google Meet between you and us. So we will actually be having those meetings. We're going to be in full high horror drag. I mean, full regalia. 
Regale yeah, I'm, I'm going. To, I'm going to regale you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so look out for that. Maybe by the time this video goes up, I actually have the link ready. We'll we'll be able to click the link in the bio. And if not, if it's not in the bio, I'll cut mm. this part out of the video. All right. That's it. <laughs> Work. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye.